Okay. Here we are. Uh, apart together, Board of Selectmen meeting, regular meeting, uh, Tuesday, July 5th, 2020. Coming to you remote Zoom with the able assistance of our clerk, John Barry. Uh, first thing on the agenda is approval of minutes of April 21. I move to approve the minutes of April 21. Right. Second. Is there a second? second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So next is uh, additions to the agenda. I have one and that's uh, Housatonic Railroad Spraying proposal. Are there any other additions? Okay, so there's a second to add the Housatonic Railroad Sprain proposal. Second. Okay. All right, moving down to communications. The only communications I have is that we will get the tax deferral forms up on the website in the next, before the next meeting, so people can look for that. Uh, again, it's a tax deferral. Uh, program that this board has approved that would allow people to defer their taxes for three months instead of being due in July, they'd be due in October, uh, but they have to apply for that deferral. They can't just not pay and then um, talk to us later. You have to be approved for it and show that you have been uh, impacted by the pandemic. So we will get that up on the website and have those available. Uh, any other communications? All right, on to uh, COVID-19 uh, coronavirus update. Have a little uh, show and tell. This is a face shield that was actually made in Cornwall uh, by some enterprising young people and they've gone into the business at the request of people at a um, nearby uh, hospital that were under, um, that did not have enough uh, personal protective equipment. So uh, these people and their family took it upon themselves to get a 3D printer going and are cranking out about six of these a day. They have donated some also to the Cornwall Ambulance and they have been used on some of our potential COVID uh, responses to um, emergencies. So anyway, thank you for the people involved with that production. It's an amazing effort and again, has been well received by the people that are in need of such equipment. Um, we do continue to operate under a uh, town, state and federal uh, emergency declaration. Um, and we uh, expect to see uh, some changes in that coming forward in the end of, by the end of May, uh, but we still remind people that they uh, must wear masks uh, in public and our thanks go out to the local businesses that have uh, put regulations in place that require people to wear masks um, in public and businesses and again, uh, we've had great compliance. Uh, thanks again to Diane Beebe. She got uh, me about 50 masks to deliver to uh, businesses in town that are, um, that are active in providing essential services to the public. And uh, they were well received by those businesses. Uh, and again, thanks for them for making the effort to uh, stay open to provide people for with essential services um, in this difficult time. Uh, also, we are um, looking uh, at doing uh, a few things uh, differently and we will uh, be using guidance for the Torrington Area Health District on uh, recreation programs uh, one thing that has come up is there's more and more uh, 
use and more and more people outside, more and more people visiting Cornwall. So I'm going to try to work with the health district in getting some sign, signage up at our uh, town parks and playgrounds so that people know um, that they still have to practice social distancing and wear protective uh, face masks uh, when they visit those things. So that's one thing I want to get underway as soon as possible. Um, and we will, um, <clears throat> according to Rob Rubo, there should be some guidance as far as uh, recreation facilities, uh, beaches, tennis courts, these kind of things coming out um, the third week in May. So we'll have some guidance on uh, how do we uh, have programs uh, in the summer uh, with the maximum amount of safety is again, our, our goal for that. Um, very generous uh, donations continue to come in and donations of time to uh, deliver necessities to our vulnerable population. And thanks again to Heather and the crew at the parish house who have been working steadily for I think six or seven weeks now delivering uh, food and necessities. Um, I think we got a bill for two weeks from food uh, was about $5,000 just from one store. So we have been moving a lot of uh, uh, products to people and we have been getting a wonderful amount of, of things given to us in addition to the financial contributions that people have been very generous about. Uh, so again, we'll keep on with our, our unified command group, work group that's been working well together. Um, and we meet on Fridays uh, through Zoom and again, address any issues that come up from time to time as we get through this all together. So again, thanks to everybody uh, for their contributions, large and small, even if it's uh, staying home and instead of going out. Uh, I know it's not the most fun all the time, but we've had great cooperation from our townspeople in, uh, in really helping out in making and doing what's socially responsible and helping everybody uh, stay well. So that's all I had. Any thoughts, comments from the board members on where we're at with the, the pandemic? Yeah, I just, I agree with signage in public spaces. I think, I mean, you know, even on my walks, I've noticed an increase of people and some people are really doing their part and giving people distance and some people maybe, maybe slipping their minds. So I think some reminders would be great. Okay. We'll see what we can get, get organized. Good. Anything else on all that? Uh, okay. So then uh, next we have adoption of the budget. Uh, we've been working on that since before the epi epidemic um, in January, uh, we went to the budget hearing uh, virtually. Uh, we've had the ability to receive comments from townspeople through email. We have not received any. Um, we feel that the budget we presented uh, is still uh, very uh, well balanced between what we need to do and our goal of not increasing taxes, especially this year. Um, and we're able to do that with actually using less money uh, from our reserves than we have in the past. So uh, I feel good about the budget as it was presented. I think the school um, board met this afternoon and may have some further reductions. So, and again, if we find out that we don't have to do everything in the budget, that that will just strengthen our reserves uh, going forward. So I think we are in good shape. I talked to Joe Pryor, uh, Board of Finance Chair today, and I think everybody's uh, pretty content with where we're at and what we've been able to achieve through some good cooperative work through a lot of town uh, agencies. So again, um, our one of our bigger concerns was the being able to respond with social services 
through of even before this pandemic and again um, the outpouring of support to, for our food and, food and fuel fund uh, has put us in really good shape for that so uh, thanks to everybody that's that's made uh, contributions to that um, so we don't have to raise taxes um, so anyway without any other comments I just make a motion that we adopt the 2021 budget that as it was presented at the budget hearing uh, and send it off to the uh, Board of Finances uh, for their approval under the executive order that allows towns to approve municipal budgets for adoption without a town meeting because of the pandemic. So is there a second to that? I second that. And okay. I want everyone for keeping the mill rate the same. I think that's good. I think that's very easy for people to understand and uh, appreciate that we're just trying to keep everything the same. And so other, with everything else going on, they, they don't have to worry about an increased tax bill right. uh, from us. So anyway, we're, we're working on that. Um, so any more discussion? No. I'm All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next is uh, our big, our most important day in May is uh, Memorial Day. Uh, I did talk with people from the local B VFW and they said that their uh, commanders have um, said that the VFW will not um, participate in the Memorial Day observances this year. Uh, just because of the risk of the pandemics. Uh, so that is a shame and probably the first time that's happened. Uh, they, our local branch will decorate the graves of the hundreds of uh, veterans that we have resting in our Cornwall cemeteries. So that will be done. Uh, the ceremony in West Cornwall will not happen as usual because uh, the VFW will not uh, be there for that. Um, but I think what we are looking at now is maybe doing something uh, else to supplement the program on that day. So we'll have more details at our next meeting, which will be before Memorial Day. Um, again, we're just trying to do something that's very safe, but um, very appropriate for that important day. Uh, again, no uh, no usual parade, no uh, carnival following the festivities, but we will have uh, a at least a video of some of the commemorations that will be going on that day. So again, we'll we'll try to get make the day as meaningful as possible, and we encourage people to go out and visit their veterans in the several Cornwall cemeteries that will be decorated by the VFW and thank them again for their part in doing that. Anything else on Memorial Day? Um, so, okay, uh, next we have the internet meeting, uh, the survey of internet, uh, internet capacity and uh, in the town is up on the website and I would encourage everybody to complete that. Uh, and there is going to be a stakeholders meeting on May 18th. Uh, so I think that's the day before our next meeting. So again, that's publicized on the website and uh, should be interesting. Um, it's being chaired by Ben Politsky of Morris who is uh, quite knowledgeable about um, information technology and we'll be running that program. It's also going to go in the newsletter as well. Good. Okay, got it. All right, anything else on the internet meeting other than we'll publicize it as much as we can? And uh, again, I think it's, if nothing else, this, this um, uh, pandemic is, is um, stress the need for connectivity. Um, certainly we couldn't respond to it as well as we have as a town. I don't think uh, 
I think people would be feeling much more isolated here if we did not have um, some connect connectivity. Uh, and certainly people are relying on it to check on their family members to get information. And so again, as more and more people are uh, sequestering here and working remotely, um, I think this is the way of the future and we do need to make sure we're up to speed on it in a most practical way as possible. Uh, Joe Pryor did, and there's a lot of interest in people doing stuff, people are following and what's gonna be the best way to, to have high-speed internet. Um, Joe Pryor, the Board of Finance is following Elon Musk's efforts to launch satellites to uh, work on um, high-speed internet to remote places north of the equator uh, right now. So, and again, I don't, <clears throat> I haven't dug into his efforts, um, but again, it's good to know that there are options out there and that people are interested in the options. So any other thoughts on that? Okay. Uh, let's see, our next thing is uh, Housatonic Railroad. Um, we did get an email from the contractor that sprays for the railroad uh, saying that they are gonna commence after May 18th uh, with their spray program. So that um, was an interesting piece of news. They do spray most years. Uh, it was a little discouraging in these times when we're trying to get uh, allocation of resources as far as PPE for first responders and healthcare for people that there seems to be money to uh, spray railroad tracks when there's not money to do other things. I've been told repeatedly those aren't the same pots of money, but um, it's a long-standing issue and something that probably does not, in my opinion, need to be done is spray the tracks, which are already defoliated um, throughout Cornwall uh, this year, but they operate under federal and state licenses. Uh, and there's been no progress made on taking down the trees, which we've noticed in our uh, comments, the veg vegetation management program, that they have not, they've mismanaged the vegetation uh, along the tracks and should uh, take down what they've already uh, killed before they kill more things with the herbicide. So I thought I'd write those thoughts again to the railroad company and to our state representatives uh, that they should deal with the damage instead of spraying more they should take care of what's been killed by the herbicide uh, and as an initiative i remember at one of our meetings last fall when we tried to present our case it was brought out that the town can apply to exempt areas from spraying so I didn't think they were gonna go right into this break program, but I guess uh, they had different ideas. So my thought at this point is to launch the idea that the Board of Selectmen requests that the railroad and its contractors do not spray the heavily settled, by Cornwall standards anyway, the uh, sections of the track, especially in Cornwall Bridge and West Cornwall. And I have a little a nice Cornwall map here, which I can send uh, people here, which has little carve outs for West Cornwall. There's West Cornwall and there's Cornwall Bridge right there. So, oh, that was Cornwall Village. Uh, Cornwall Bridge is up here. So anyway, it does designate the, uh, the metropolitan part of uh, Cornwall Bridge and West Cornwall. So I'd also extend that request to go down through the Trinity Conference Center uh, because they do have gardens that are used to feed their uh, people that visit that are quite close to the tracks and they don't need a bunch of spray drift in that area because the tracks go right through the conference um, or retreat center. So with your permission, I would then ask the railroad company and their uh, contractors to not spray in these heavily settled areas. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, and I, I feel like you can 
push that as much as you can to even not so heavily settled areas, in my opinion, like as much area that we can, I think we should fight for. Right. I mean, if I'd like to get the settled areas first, just because there's a large section of state forest. Agreed. Where, you know, whatever. So, I mean, we're not trying to say don't spray anywhere and we know the tracks have to be maintained. However, when they're spraying people's soccer goals and fruit trees and gardens, Enough. Enough's, enough's enough, cowboy. No, I totally agree. So, I'm just saying I'm I'm all behind it and I'm, you know, for more even past that. So Right. So we'll start with this and see how it goes. Um so anyway, that was my thoughts. Priscilla, you live within sight of the tracks. What do you think? I think well, they shouldn't spray at all. It would be nice if they would take away the trees they cut down in front of my house instead of just leaving them. I mean, they've been not very good neighbors in terms of taking care of the property over which they drive. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Gordon, you said these are federal, they're federal licenses. Is that what you said? Yeah, well, or whatever. I mean, they, they have federal standards from the federal highway or wherever they are. Federal transportation stuff says in okay. on railroad right of ways, you can spray, spray this, spray that, whatever. Right. So that's a, it's a federal statute. Yeah, or federal regulations. Federal, I would federal, think. Regulation. federal okay. regulations would would um, would have jurisdiction on how uh, right of ways are Got it. maintained. So um, at least that's what I've been told, and I can believe that. So um, you know, the, and again, there are also state regulations because I believe the Massachusetts regulations are somewhat different than they are in Connecticut as far as local uh, input on these decisions. Okay, okay. So anyway, uh, we'll get that off uh, tomorrow and uh, see where that goes. Um, again, these guys spray, the contractor sprays in a bunch of different states um, and that's their business. But again, our business is to look out for our little town. So uh, let's see, any uh, public comments. We have bills um, to pay down at the office, so Barbara will send you that manifest. Okay. But our last thing is uh, public comments. The public. I saw the press there. Yeah. Can can the press ask a question? You bet. The press can ask many questions. There is well, no. I just have. I think I just have one, and that has to do with that May 18th meeting on the internet connectivity. Yeah. Is that going to be a Zoom? Is that, is that going to be a Zoom meeting? Uh, I believe so. I believe it's going to be a virtual, virt somehow a virtual meeting. I'm sure it's going to be a remote meeting. So again, the information on that and how do you attend is on the website. I believe. Okay, I'll look there then. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, you're welcome. That's the next. Uh, that's Lisa, the next. I don't know if you're a subscriber to our Selectman's newsletter, but um information like that will be in our in our bi-weekly newsletters as well so i can email you separately to see to show you how to subscribe if you're not already well, subscribed i think i can also figure that out i think i, I may have i may have done it okay I'll, yeah because that, that kind of information will go in our newsletters and all right. links and all that kind of stuff all right thank Marina, you Marina. can you send that to me absolutely yes great thank you yep okay. i have a comment i mean Go ahead. Gordon, may I say something? Sure. There's Kate. I didn't yeah, know who. How are who you? you? All right. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, yeah. I just, um, I'm preparing for this internet meeting and have been reviewing the different webinars that Ben has been um, putting, um, conducting. Yeah. And um, in the last one, he said that the current questionnaire was not sufficient because um, the questions regarding strength of, of connection were inadequate. And also he felt that the um, questionnaire should cover the needs of remote education, of remote um, health, um, um, health medicine. checks that that kind of thing and then of course what were the needs of small businesses so they the point is that he he seems to be as we speak revising that questionnaire so either you check with him to find out how he's going on that or 
wait and see, but it's it's going to be it's going to change quickly. So I'm sure. Well, there is there is some tests you can do right now to test what your signal is and what your your capacity, your current. I thought the point of the survey was to a little bit on what is your current capacity because again it, there is a thing that 30 percent of the region has no broadband coverage but that also is greatly varies from town to town well i'm just saying uh, if you're if you're going to get everybody to fill in a questionnaire i i check with ben and make sure this is the right questionnaire that's my point who, yeah. where did the where did the first questionnaire come from uh, sharon it's one that was done before the outbreak and, and I think it was written by Sharon. Huh. Okay, across the river. Hmm. Okay. So I'd check with him. I'd check with him All first. Right. All yeah. right, see if he has supplemental survey. Right. Okay, got it. Thank you. Anything else from the public? Anybody out there with a comment? Okay. Great. All right. Well, I wish you all well and stay safe. And we'll, we're planning to keep Zooming as long as we have to. Um, and again, uh, thank John and the people that have um, made this possible and accessible. And I think it overall, it works really, works really well. And people have been adapting to this um, and it's been working out. So anyway, thanks everybody and uh, motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. All right. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Bye. I'm going to go look at the checks.